Welcome to the Pole Shift News, the Mavstar Observatory guys. Okay, let's start as we usually do. Uh, big thanks to those few people that are supporting the observatory. And, you know, you might have gathered from uh, the last video that we lost uh, around about a week ago, 10% uh, of the uh, total funds we raise on Patreon. Guys, I've got no choice but to continue with the job I do, you know, because I can't invest my full time in this uh, as of yet, but we are not probably far away from that. I don't need to raise a lot of money, you know, I can, like most of you guys out there, live on the breadline, you know, as long as we pay a few of the most important bills, we can invest the time. And I think, you know, we're getting there where we need to do that. We're a global observatory, as you can see now, uh, Hong Kong has come online and we've had the first five days or so of uh, test data and fantastic resolution a little bit of movement at the beginning uh, which is normal you know and um, now um, Tony has found somewhere uh, more suitable for the magnetometer so you know the um, left hand scale will change uh, when it gets relocated to its new position but you know fantastic uh, we've now got five out of five we've got some good news as well we have managed to uh, source somebody from India in Punjab who's going to be uh, hopefully taking one of our magnetometers in the next week or so. So we'll have six out of six guys, as well as the UK TriMag and Magnetosphere Sensor. And all this is dedicated to this anomaly, this rare anomaly that's taking place in our lives. All this I could hope for uh, more than anything else now at this stage is a little bit more backing and funding from you guys um, and we can you know invest a little bit more time like I say we don't need to uh, a great deal more get a great deal more um, support coming in for that to happen but it needs to be uh, regular and it's not and you can't rely on uh, donations from one month to the next at least I can't afford to do that at the moment because you know I want to stay with a roof over my head and uh, you know it's, it's just a bit of a pity you know you put all the best efforts in you possibly can to get it to somewhere and it's really close to being something yet it just needs a little bit more of a push I'm trying to guys get the um, observatory self-sustained that's what I'm trying to do so that I don't have to keep mentioning you know the PayPal link and the patron account um, but it's, it's proving difficult, you know, the Google AdSense um, just doesn't pay, you know, more than $5 if we're lucky a day. Um, you can't rely on that because it's less than, you know, $150 a month with just, you know, doing that. And I know it's a bit of a pain for some of you guys to watch these adverts. It's just not where I want to be with any of this. Um, I have got some plans uh, for the website to generate some revenue uh, later on hopefully in the year but you know again we've had uh, a, a, bit, a little bit of a run of bad luck um, with the data coming from Southern California Kentucky and the Gold Coast just a few technical problems this is the reality of running uh, a global observatory you know when more people get involved um, you know more problems can occur just simply because there's more possibilities of problems occurring and we've got a few uh, teething problems that we've got to sort out over in the Gold Coast and Kentucky and Southern California but I'm pretty sure it, that this can be uh, you know put right it's you know it's not a big um, uh, it's not a complex piece of equipment that uh, requires a lot of um, you know knowledge in uh, and, and and understanding how to work it it's just you know silly, silly things like you know we we're, we're struggling with um sd cards uh corrupted files uh for the first uh months data collection from some of these places and uh it's a little bit frustrating because you know 5 months nearly 6 months work's gone into this and you know the magnet five of the magnetometers are out in the location hopefully another one's going out in the next week or so and we really need to knock these, uh, you know, little kinks out and uh, get the data coming in regularly. And, you know, we need it as well. Um, you know, nice straight lines so that we can zoom in on the resolution, uh, you know, where they're not being adjusted and moved around. You know, they've got to be bolted down at the end of the day, these magnetometers, because they read the background magnetism of wherever they're placed. If they're moved, then, you know, the XYZ uh 
um, data moves as well and that's why we get different readings on the left hand side but it doesn't matter so long as they are fixed in a position permanently and you know we get a steady flow of data coming back we'll be able to uh, use that background magnetism to work out what's going on with these high intense regions over the southern and northern hemisphere so yeah guys you know it's um you know we're moving forward you know we've got data coming from china now and we've got a uh, magnetometer hopefully going out in the next week or so and you know we're covering this uh, as best we can you know we've got the trimag tracking the northern hemisphere with the poles over there and what's going on we've got the magnetosphere sensor measuring the magnetosphere strength regularly and we've got these six magnetometers which will soon all be out collecting data on this anomaly and more specifically targeting those high intense regions and you know why it's important to get these uh, out there and get the data coming back in because at, at, the, at this point in time there isn't any organisation that is forthcoming with data globally and that's why we have took it upon ourselves to go out there with our magnetometers in America, in Australia, in Hong Kong and in India now and go out there and get the data ourselves. It's a massive, massive effort that's gone into this level to achieve what we've got. Remember, if NASA was going to attempt this on the ground, they would have to liaise with all these governments around the world in order to you know, uh, get some sort of agreement that they can have facilities in these countries and then they would have to employ people to you know, run the magnetometers and collect the data. It would easily spiral into millions of pounds, trust me guys, with the development of the magnetometers, uh, the programmers that would be required, the project uh, managers and so on and so forth. It would easily, easily spiral into millions of pounds to achieve what we've done. And we've got these magnetometers on the ground. I think it's a lot more accurate than having satellites uh, measure the magnetosphere as they fly over, you know, above the Earth. And why do I say that? Well, simply because there could be anomalies that could occur that could give false readings on those satellites. They're not 100% uh, foolproof. Ours are on the ground. You know, we can eliminate some of the random uncertainties that these magnetometers might pick up, but it's unlikely we're going to get lots of them. So let's have a quick look at the data. All you've got to do is click on Hong Kong if you want to have a look at the test data for the last five days. Um, Hong Kong's now gone into uh, full data collection. Uh, so it'll be a month before we get the data back next uh, from Hong Kong. Uh, as you can see, a real nice resolution there. Uh, you can see that it's moving up and down, collecting data. So there's something going on over in Hong Kong. And we can see that it, it, it includes, uh, you know, a couple of um, micro Teslas or, yeah, you know, uh, in, in fluctuation constantly across the readings, uh, the 443 readings that we've got. So we, we are looking at true resolution of what's happening over in Hong Kong, at least from that initial starting point where it was adjusted and then carried on. So great resolution there from Hong Kong. And, you know, in the next month's worth of data from any one of these locations, the resolution will be increased like what we do with the magnetosphere sensor. And we'll be able to look in more particularly at where, you know, the fluctuations are occurring and compare that with the magnetosphere strength and also uh, the TriMag data as well. So, you know, we're doing all we can at this observatory and, you know, it's a good job. The only thing we need, guys, is a little bit more help, um, you know, and a little bit more assistance with, you know, raising some cash for it because that's our only weakness at the moment. So, you know, there's a link down there, guys, um, if you want to help support what we're doing. And, um, you know, if, if, like I say, you know, Patreon's not for you, the PayPal link is there. And once again, thanks for those people that are supporting it. Uh, I'll catch up with you, hopefully, in the next few days when we'll have some data coming back from either the Gold Coast, Australia, uh, Kentucky, uh, United States, or Southern California. So I'll keep you informed as to when and where we do get that. But remember, on or around about the 17th of this month, uh, we pull the SD cards at the TriMag and it's going to be interesting to see what's been going on over the last month because of what took place last month. Remember, unprecedented um, data collected 
in a, in a month's time, uh, sorry, in last month, uh, with regards to the activity over the Northern Hemisphere and the moving around of the poles over that region. So guys, you know, the links are down there if you want to support us. That's where we really need to get some more assistance now. Um, I'm just hoping that there's a few people out there that see value in what we do and all the work that we're putting. And uh, there's no more to say anything else other than I'll catch up with you in a few days. And as always, take care. Bye for now.